Welcome back to the channel everyone. Welcome to those that are new. My name's Ollie and I love getting into the outdoors as much as possible. Spearfishing, hunting, camping, just getting into nature and immersing myself into it. The Fijian adventure hasn't disappointed so far, taking off some beautiful species, some big Spanish mackerel, plenty of reefies, all cooked up, beautiful Fijian local style. Lush waterfalls, pristine white beaches, coral reefs, blue water. It's been fantastic. Just immersing myself in the Fijian culture, on land, underwater. It's been an epic trip. If you've missed the first two parts of this series, I'll leave the links in the description below. Be sure to check those out. Otherwise, stick around and enjoy the action ahead. On the third and final instalment, we head wide in search of Wahoo. Big, fast, pelagic fish. And we encounter some incredible sights. Once again, plenty of sharky action. We go gathering for some clams. And of course have a big cook up on the beach, local style. This episode is one not to miss. Morning everyone, welcome back to another instalment in Fiji. Just getting a coffee into me and we are ripping into it. We're heading a bit wider today, we're all fueled up, boats totally packed up with spear guns and everything. And we're going wide to a spot known for good wahoo so that is the aim today to get on some nice hoos and uh see what else turns up any more spanish mackerel walu uh we'll take those as well so i'm pumped we've just been rigging our guns all last night turning them to uh breakaway setups um as you need with big fish so <sighs> pumped understatement <laughs> Front row speak there? No way. Yeah. Is the stick? I can't nice. find it. <coughs> oh, let me. There we go. Sweet. Oh, oh, then. Ah. Set. Yeah, yeah. Loves. Good size. You. I can imagine three rods. <laughs> Is that a hammer? Well, yeah, straight yeah. into it. Yeah. Two nice big bit of wahoo. You better, better, better suit up and we're doing that. Yeah. Wah. Hey, dude. Woo. Oh, you're up, you're up. Lift up there. Taste it. Right, we've uh, made it to our destination for the day. We've got a nice big 
nice big reef running all along here for a couple of kilometers and uh, we just chucked the lures in five minutes later got whacked so two nice wahoo on deck um, 20 kg plus nice fish so yeah all geared up got the gun ready float and um, we're actually just trying to get some barracuda or bait fish to chum up later for wahoo but um got wahoo already so I might jump in the next time we get a strike otherwise we'll get to the the main spot here um, where the reef pokes out a bit and uh, jump in with the flashes and see what's around pretty pretty pumped this is some nice fish good size wahoo so just running a breakaway setup hard line connected straight to the shooting line so once that spear comes out this flies off connected 25 meter line to the big big float hopefully that stops the fish <laughs> gotta hit it first Leatherback turtle. Woo! Look at him. That's pretty rare leatherback turtle. Woo! You can dump him, man. Yeah? Yeah. Holy f. Oh, it's gonna move. It's moving. It's gone. That's good. Wow. That was absolutely wicked. Never seen one of those. Huge. Huge. Wow. <laughs> We situated ourselves just off the reef in the deep blue using our flasher floating around what seemed like ages before finally a wahoo came in to inspect the flasher. The fish came around and another two of them perfectly I cruise towards them line up the shot I'm confident and squeeze off and I cannot believe it it's shot low just under the fish. We frantically swap over guns. I grab Pete's single flopper, 130. Go to line up the second fish, but it's almost impossible with the sea chop on the surface. I just can't squeeze a shot off. It's heartbreaking, it's hard to watch, but that's life and that's spearfishing and those wahoos swim on for another day. I later find out in pool testing the guns shooting about 20 centimeters low. A big grey reef shark comes in as we start to chum up the water trying to lure in some wahoo back into the area. circles us for some time, stealing our chum, being quite the nuisance. Quite cool diving with the sharks, but annoying in this situation. These big grey reef sharks are the worst sharks to deal with in the tropics, in this spot anyways. Very pesky fish, can get quite aggressive when wound up with fresh blood in the water or if there's two or more of them and this fish just would not leave us alone
floating around for another hour, hour and a half, using the flasher, a bit of chum, and finally we lured another wahoo into the zone. Just as we're about to give up and move on, move another spot, this big wahoo comes out of the depth, probably around 25 kilo, it's a nice fish. I just can't get it to come close enough with the throw flasher. Often when they're by themselves, they just aren't as comfortable as with most fish species. A sucker fish comes in here. This fish had been cruising around with the great reef shark. You can see the sucker platform on the top of its head there, which they used to lodge themselves onto sharks and other big fish. Finally, what seemed like another hour, two hours, we get a big school of wahoo come cruising in. These fish are incredible. They just appear in the blink of an eye out of the blue deep water. It's a big school, I'm not sure which one to line up. This one at the top definitely looks the biggest. I slowly, slowly swim towards it. I just can't close the distance. With such clean water, that's probably seven to eight meters, just out of range. Looking back at footage, I was definitely a bit too aggressive and should have swum around to the right to try and turn the fish. Sit tight, they still just won't come into me. But here you can see, one comes in to inspect Pete's flasher. He just about lines it up, ready to pull the shot, and the fish turns. I grab my flasher, throw it out, try to lure them into me once again. As it's my first time hunting wahoo, it's all very, very exciting. My heart is pumping, it's racing, and my body language is definitely a bit aggressive. My head movements, everything needs to slow down. Easy to say once watching this footage again. I think the fish have moved on. Can't see anything. But I throw the flasher one last time to try and lure them back in. They must be just out there, surely. And amazingly, the fish comes out of the depths here to check it out. I line it up perfectly. And just at the last minute, my gun moves up slightly from the sea chop on the surface and it shoots low. It's through the fish, mid body at the back, not perfect, but it is through the fish. And the wahoo takes off like they do, like a lightning bolt. They are so fast. Float screams off on the surface. Unfortunately, after a couple of minutes, it busts off, ripping out, or sharked, I'm not sure, but I lost another wahoo, absolutely gutted. Yeah, Karen's going strong. As the day progressing and the weather turning, getting very windy, we called it quits on the wahoo and moved in closer to the inshore reefs. It didn't take long to get stuck into some action, with Dan putting a solid shot here into a GT. Dan makes quick work of this fish, getting it to the surface. Then he spots some doggies below, dogtooth tuna. <laughs> With the fish still on the end of the line, he dives down in the hopes to attract these doggies back into the zone, back near the flasher. Close enough for me to dive down and get a shot, but they're on a mission and disappear into the depths. Dan returns to the surface, and he's secured this beautiful GT, Giant Trevally, a very hard fighting fish, and if you don't injure them or stone shot them, it can ruin your gear, just like the Dogtooth Tuna, very tough fish.
Shortly after, Dan spots a school of dogtooth tuned down below with the unmistakable white dot on their tail. He sinks down, slowly into the depths. Using his throw flasher, he's trying to lure them in. Any tactic he can, but the dogtooth are on a mission and soon swim out into the depths. We take turns diving up and down. They must be in this area. I'm down on a drop here, sinking down close to about 18 meters. You can see a few dogtooth tuna out to the left there. And then this huge school of barracuda comes cruising in past this coral bommy. Very big school of barracuda, but not our target species today. We're after wahoo or doggies. A large hammerhead shark here cruising through, very cool to see. An awesome spot filled with bait fish, anything could turn up. I throw my flasher down once more, right on top of this coral bommy. I wait a few moments, breathe up nicely, take that last breath, I haven't shot a fish yet today and I'm pretty itchy to get something to take home for dinner and sink down slowly to collect my flasher. Nothing really happening and then I spot a nice fish down below on these beautiful coral beds. What looks to be a sweet lips, a great eating fish. I sink down further here, slowly, calmly and just wait for my chance to get a shot off. Looks like the fish has turned to move away and then it circles back round. Comes to look at my shiny flopper and whack. Get a nice close shot right through the fish's brain and it is lights out. Luckily, as there's so many sharks in the area, without a good stone shot at this depth, you are not landing the fish. Awesome, beautiful sweet lips and some fresh fish to take home for dinner for our big seafood cook up. The sweet lips, a very beautiful fish with their spotted coloration, patterns, very cool fish. <clears throat> After a few days of hard diving, we all decide to pack up and head home. On the way however, Dan stops us into this beautiful sheltered cove one of his favourite beaches, an unspoiled, untouched piece of paradise. No big fancy resorts, no people, no houses, nothing. That beautiful lush forest meeting the white sandy beach, an absolute pristine example of how Fiji used to be. Here you can see the large fish traps, thousands of years old, still standing to this day, incredible beautiful coral reef dropping off into the blue an absolute beautiful beautiful sight as I chuck the drone up we sit in this bay for a while talk about the missed opportunities the opportunities we did have all part of the sport analyzing the days spearfishing where we went wrong how we can improve and just admire this absolutely beautiful piece of coastline piece of the world After that, a quick steam home, picking up a few more tuna, and it was time for a cook up.
well hard day out diving pretty rough conditions and um, not the cleanest fizz but um, we had our chances I had my chances clean missed one wahoo and then the other one unfortunately was a bit low the shot I believe and it tore off so other than that we didn't get too many more opportunities a few Lone Ranger wahoo came in but um, yeah they just didn't hang around long enough and yeah anyways uh, Dan managed the GT I got that sweet lips um, then we picked up a few little skippies and bonito on the way home so came home with fish it's all good I'm in Fiji we're just sorting the boat out now sun's going down so uh, that's spear fishing that's fishing doesn't always go your way um, but yeah good learning curve I hope Hope I've learned from that, but we'll replay the footage later and see what the case is. Yeah, pretty bucket. Gonna have a cold beer and chill out. So, get this all washed down, and um, I think the weather's getting worse and worse, so we'll probably go for a bit of a uh, gather along the coast tomorrow. I think we're gonna go get some um, conch shells or some sort of clam, so we'll go for a bit of a walk at low tide. We've got the super moon, full moon, king tide, so it'll be really low tomorrow, and um, yeah, all good. I wasn't happy with the missed shots on the wahoo, bad shots, and after some further testing that day, realised the gun definitely Same. was shooting low. It's low. That's why I'm missing those fish. About 20 centimetres low. Not used to shooting double flopper shafts, that extra flopper on top creates more drag pushing that shaft downwards. So with a quick tune up, bending that bottom flopper slightly, I was able to fix the issue and once again hitting the bullseye. Well, 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 it's the day after the big wahoo failure, learning lesson. I've been thinking about it all night, all morning, but uh, I think I've gotten over it. It's just a fish. Um, whoa. <laughs> just about got bowled over by a coconut. They're always dropping around here so yeah that's life moved on watch the replay gun just moved up moved down at the last second before i pulled the trigger i think a wave knocked me a bit that's my excuse anyways naked after yesterday's dive so today with this windy weather we're going to go for a walk around the reef here it's a super moon dead low tide so yeah we're going to go try and pick up some tasty clams on the reef um, go for a walk and yeah see what we can gather up for a different type of seafood feast then we've got those fish from yesterday pretty keen to try the sweet lips looks tasty shot one last time I was here in Fiji but gave it away to a local so this time definitely gonna eat it um, yeah so let's go see what we can find looking like we've got a bit of a serious mission in our hands getting some tools made Love it, love uh, trying new things, new seafood, so pumped as. Right, we're in towards, just gonna go out through this mangrove, out to the edge, out to the reef, and uh, yeah, we'll see if we can find these clams. And yeah, see if what else, we might find some uh, octopus, anything, and uh, yeah, then we're gonna have a cook up on the beach, so. Excited. So there's very old signs of uh, human life run here there's pottery and all up on the hills on this island dating back 2,000 years plus um, so some really cool old history and all around the lagoons you can see the old fish traps made with rocks just dotted around all of these little islands here um, just in this part of Fiji so obviously a very very early settlement and um, pretty neat
Oh uh, yeah, like a horse muscle in New Zealand. But it's not really. Oh wow, the colour in there. <laughs> That's Ooh. a nice one bro. Woo! Sweet. What, what, what do you call them? A file clam. File clam. Ah, wow, cool. This wind is making it really hard to spot them. The waves crashing, but uh, get there. Beautiful bro. Here we've got a uh, curry fish. Looks like a sea cucumber. It's a, it's a I think it's probably the same family. Interesting thing. And uh, apparently hunted to almost extinction. Pretty rare. Wow. Who's, who's eating that? The pigeons, eh? Before you ask, yes, these clams are plentiful all along the coast, the coral reefs dotted around here are just loaded with them and where we're picking them up Dan just has a small gather once a year We're doing a beach cook up this afternoon. Got the fire blazing. That's hot, man. A couple of cold uh, Fiji bitters. Actually, really good beer, I think. Go to a lot of islands and bloody countries around the world, and everywhere's got their local beer. Often pretty light, cheap stuff, but this is actually, um, yeah, good beer. Shout out to Fiji bitter. So, we've got some freshwater clams from the other day. Almost looks like a tour tour for those in New Zealand. Um, yeah, fresh water is quite interesting. We're going to have to add a bit of salt water and lemon and spice to it because they're quite bland apparently, but they look nice and meaty. And then we've got our fresh clams from the morning. Um, I said earlier that they are a bit um, scarce, but actually, Dan said, all these reefs, all the islands are loaded. There's two two types, and this one doesn't grow big like the giant clams. Um, and there were heaps, heaps this morning. Filled a bucket and a couple of buckets um, quite easily plenty more so that's good looking forward to it it's gonna be a feast we've got uh, the sweet lips from yesterday I'm gonna cook that on the fire and uh, gonna be a feast not a bad spot here for a little cook up there's a little bench bear station and uh, Todd's coming in first up we've got some eggplant straight on the fire here's the sweet lips from yesterday Beautiful looking fish eh? spots. So we're gonna wrap it in the banana leaf. Yeah. Anything else or just straight on the fire? This one uh, we'll uh, throw it in the fire. So this one bend out the scale. Yeah. Straight in the fire, burn the scales off, and then wrap it up in the, the leaves. Nice. Here's our uh, uh, clam in a giant clam shell. Got all the meat in here, and we're gonna cook that on the fire. Here's that um, type of mussel here, clam. Looks like a big horse mussel in New Zealand. Very similar. Taste of the mussel, it tasted like scallop. Same as, uh, same as the horse mussels. Really awesome, these giant clams, incredible. Okay. 
actually it's gonna take one side. Fish in there. <laughs> it's time to go in now. Let's go turn a to reflect that. Yep. Up. Here's these uh, sea grapes, they call them. Pick them up from the market. Let's see what these taste like. Quite mild, a little bit of a salty seafood taste, very mild, almost creamy, quite quite weird. Nice texture. I think we're gonna do some sort of salad with those, lemon juice and stuff, so. Mm, those are good. Apparently very, uh, very nutritious. Lots of good stuff in those. As with anything, just fresh from the wild, you know? It's not rocket science. So what are we gonna do with the coconut, then? Just uh, scrape it up and uh... Get the milk out, we use it for the nama, uh, for fresh milk, eh? Yeah. Nama. Nama. Fish dipping. Right, everything's going on the fire. Got some big bananas. Here's all our clams cooking away. The rest of the tuna, skipjack. Yum. Here's our eggplants. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Try cook this. Okay. I'm to try it. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Open up. Only on the scraper. <laughs> Here we've got some uh, fresh asparagus, wild asparagus. Stalks like that fat. Um, yeah, like big branches, amazing stuff. Once again, on the fire. How's that sweet lips looking pretty close there? Eh? Done? Done. <laughs> Overdone? No. Nah. <laughs> Perfect. Oh yeah, looking good bro. Yum. Go. But I can I'll put in the banana just to keep it. Yeah. Mmm. Alright. Right, here's a traditional coconut strainer, husk, no cloth, and it works just as well, just as good, nice. The feast is coming together. Right, we've got our fresh mussel, fresh mussels, clams, whatever they are, opening up on the fire, gonna take them off straight away. Get them out of the shell and then mix it in with the fresh 
coconut milk down here. It'll be good. Very similar to a tour tour. Yum. Right, here we have our beautiful cooked clams and uh, filter in some freshly squeezed coconut milk all over those bad boys and they are going to be absolutely delicious feast is coming together here's our sea grapes more bananas some kumara that's that uh, asparagus a few more clams still cooking away absolute scenes Here's all those freshwater clams, deshelled, cleaned up. And now we're gonna put them in the coconut milk and cook on the fire. So here we've got these uh, sea grapes, a bit of fresh tuna. And then we've got tuna, eggplant, coconut milk, a bit of chili. Oh, looks good. Oh, finished result. Lips under here. Yeah, Well, last day in Fiji, just packing up the gear. It's been an awesome few weeks. Hanging out with the boys, locals, getting immersed in a bit more of a bit more real Fijian culture than just going to a resort on an island and whatnot. It's been awesome. So thoroughly enjoyed my time. Diving was awesome. Some heartbreak, some good moments, some bad moments. Um, yeah, a bit of heartbreak, but um, that's all part of the sport. Unlucky on the Wahoo, but yeah, I'll be back. I'll be back chasing those fish and uh, we'll see what happens in the next few weeks. I'm off to the Solomon Islands, so stay tuned for that. Hope you like that. Something different from the cool, cold waters of New Zealand. And, um, and yeah, hopefully a few of you guys are keen to uh, try out Fiji. Give it a go, diving. If you want to uh, come over here for a mission, hit me up and um, I'll get a, I'll help you get in touch with Dan and sort of trip. Pretty buggered. It's been a yeah, pretty full on few weeks. Lots of hard diving, long hours floating around in the deep blue, looking for those mysterious wahoo to appear. Um, but yeah, it's been awesome. So hope you like that series from Fiji. Stay tuned. Next up is the Solomon Islands to a pretty remote spot. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to get immersed in that culture as well. That's the part of the fun. That's spearfishing, going to new places. It's not all about the diving, just getting into different local cultures and experiencing life around the world. It's just uh, my favorite thing to do. I just love exploring. So 
thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video feel free to give me a thumbs up helps along with the algorithms and subscribe if you want to if you haven't subscribed and you watch me regularly please consider doing that as well. help out with the algorithms try and share these uh, adventures with more people and uh yeah if you want to support the channel link in the description primalpursuit.co.nz bit of merch there for you um and that's it that's a wrap cheers fiji see you next time